Dr. Weiss. Profiles in Literature welcomes the gifted Philadelphia-born children's book illustrator E.B. Lewis. When do you use the signature Earl B. Lewis? Only when I'm basically working in my, as a fine artist. I'm, I have decided to keep the two separate. You know, I decided that I have already had already established a reputation as a fine artist, and since I was going to sign my name a lot as an illustrator, I decided to keep that separate. So I developed the literary name, E.B. Lewis. Thank you. Joining us is the retired head of children's work for the Free Library of Philadelphia, Carolyn W. Field. It's a great pleasure to greet youthful talent. <laughs> it's a great Earl. honor to be here. Uh, uh, when were you born and in what section of Philadelphia? I was born um, in the 50s, in 56, and I uh, grew up in Frankfurt, um, the northeast ah, section mm -hmm. of Philadelphia, which was a wonderful community. Um, yes, it is. Having uh, worked in the city a long time, I know, too. Uh, I understand that you passed on your talent to your older son, Aaron, seen in the photograph. Uh, how old is he? Aaron's 13 now, and um, actually, he just recently decided that um, Although he is talented in art, but um, he wants to be a scientist, an engineer. Oh, really? So yeah, so it's kind of interesting where that's going to lead. I don't know, but um, I'm excited about wherever he goes, oh. whatever direction he decides to go. Good. In. And now we're going to look at your younger son, Joshua. He was your art model for what book? Uh, he was the art model for Bad Boy and His Violin. Incredible. I mean, the way that turned out, the way that started out, he was not the initial. Uh, model and uh -huh. it ended up being the model because the one who was chosen first did not work out and it should have been him all along you know he, he's so delighted about that this photo shows the exterior of your main house in Folsom New Jersey right briefly why is that location convenient for you well I don't know if it's so much a convenience is that I fell in love with the house I've been looking at that house for about 20 years, you know, on my way to my grandparents who lived beyond. Um, and I went by and was kind of would slow down every time I got near and said, I love that house, love that house, and decided to buy it when it was available. Um, it is convenient because it's so close to Philadelphia. I'm only like 30 minutes from Philadelphia. Um, and I'm near the shore because I love water. I have an affiliation mm -hmm. with water, affinity for water. And, you know, it's just a great location. In the, inside the house, we see your tranquil art gallery. What medium do you prefer for your own art? I work in, primarily, I work in watercolor. Um, I'm just now starting to pick up um, charcoal, finding that that's a wonderful medium as well. Um, but my primarily medium of choice is watercolor. In the back of the house, we see your dog, Harry. What's his breed? <laughs> Harry's a Bouvier. Harry's a person, actually. <laughs> oh. Just disguised as a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Slightly spoiled, yes. I suspect. Yeah. Yes, he is. Uh, do discuss your formative years. Oh, man. I, I'm a teacher, um, and I also now I'm starting to go out and speak to kids. And I like to tell them about my formative years. My formative years, it, it was one that was not um, a delight and I should say, because it was hard going. I was one of five children being the eldest and grew up in a household where education was very important. But I was a tension seeker as a child and decided that um, since my sister came along um, five years after I was born, I wanted her to, I wanted, I wanted her gone, basically. I wanted Absolutely. her to go back wherever she came from. Absolutely. So um, I, as a child, was out seeking attention and um, by third grade, I was held back because I was not getting the grades that I needed to get. And by the time I reached sixth grade, something very tragic happened. Um, very tra I shouldn't say tragic, but traumatic. And um, we had a career day, if you allow me to elaborate. Yeah. Um, and that, in that career day, we had, um, it was sixth grade, and we had people from different professions. There was a doctor on the stage. Uh, a lawyer, a fireman, so on and so forth. And we asked children, we had an opportunity to raise our hands and ask questions. 
And little Charlie in the corner there, um, we all knew that he was going to do well, and he raised his hand and said that he wanted to be a doctor. Now he got a round of applause and was great, and I wanted that same attention. So I raised my hand, being the class clown, um, and said that I wanted to be a lawyer. Not really wanted to be a lawyer, just wanted to outdo little Charlie. And um, when I said that, the whole sixth grade class laughed. And that was the turning point in my life, because I realized that I didn't want that to happen. I didn't want to be laughed at. My father used to say to me, you're all there laughing at you and not laughing with you. I didn't know what that meant before that, but that day it rang true. And from that point on, you know, my life started to change. I needed some help along the way, of course. Uh, I had an uncle that was very um, strong, very strong role model in my life and came across the bridge from New Jersey into Philadelphia every Saturday morning for six years straight to take me to art school. What was his name? Bradley Smith. That's, uh, that's where the B comes from in my name, Bradley, Bradley, Earl Bradley. You also had another role model, another uncle. Yes, my uncle Lyles, also a graduate of um, where I teach now. Um, and um, the, it's, it's called, actually, it's called, it was called PCA at that time, but now it's the University of the Arts. But um, he didn't continue in that vein. He ended up working for the post office. But my Uncle Bradley is still working as an artist. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. <coughs> when did you graduate and what year from Temple University's Tyler School of Art? And I what graduated, were your majors? I graduated from um, Temple um, Tyler School of Art in 79. And I majored in art education and graphic design and illustration. Mm -hmm. And art ed. Yes, uh, well, um, art education was that, that was a part of it. That was, okay. yeah, art education. That was uh, kind of what one does um, or what one did. Uh, I guess they're still doing it now, but um, we didn't want to kind of, quote unquote, uh, be the starving artist. So you had something to fall back on, and education was that thing. Mm -hmm. And how did you become a children's book illustrator? Wow. Changed my life five years ago. Um, I was working, teaching at the Trenton Psychiatric Hospital. I had went back to school and did graduate work and received a certification um, in special ed. And was working there for about, oh, eight years. And I was painting at the same time. And while I was painting and producing work, I was fortunate enough to land a cover. Um, I was on the cover of the artist magazine and someone, uh, an agent, Jeff Dwight, saw the cover of the magazine and called me up and wanted to know if I was interested in doing children's books. Well, I told him no. <laughs> I told him I wasn't interested uh, at all and uh, that um, uh. I was a fine artist and not an illustrator. He wanted me to elaborate and I did and he said, you know what I want you to do? I want you to send me your slides. I really want you to think about this, but I want you to go to a bookstore and I wanted you to look up some names. And he gave me names like Chris Van Allsburg and Jerry Pinckney and Barry Moser and people like that. And I went and found that some of the best artwork Good in the country is being mm -hmm. done in children's books today. So I rushed back to the phone after a week or so after going through that education and um, called him up. And I said, you know I'm interested. He said, I knew you would be. So I took the liberty of sending your slides to nine different publishers. Although I mm -hmm. like your work, I don't know what they're going to say. We'll see. Three days later, he gives me a call. He said, guess what? I said, what? He said, six out of those nine publishers have given you a contract. That's great. I said, really? What does that great. mean? He said, quit your job. So great. that's what I did. And by the, end of the, by the end of that week, all nine had given me contracts. So I started out with five books, one of being, the first book being Fire in the Mountain. Yes. One, uh, your agents would like to clone you. Because, yes. <laughs> Prolific. Because, well, no, not only that. Uh, you've achieved uh, getting passion into some of your illustrations. Yes. Why is that important? Uh, well, when you talk about passion, you're talking about emotion, you know, that strong feeling, that human desire um, to be, to exceed, um, to feel, to have um, um, this uh, strong, as I call it, a strong God sense, a sense of, uh, of God, someone more powerful than yourself. And um, when I paint, it's kind of like an ingredient that one puts, if, if I like, um, could digress here in a, for a moment, um, if you're baking a cake, um, 
you will put cinnamon and nutmeg, what have you, and the ingredients that you put in, you will taste. Same is true with um, painting, that you have to put that emotion in so one feels it. And if you read my reviews, um, I think it's being tasted. Oh, you know, it's it's, well appreciated. Yes. Well, your ability to convey passion is demonstrated in the cover of Jane Kurtz's Fire on the Mountain, mm -hmm. published by Simon & Schuster. Uh, it's set in Ethiopia. Now, where did you do your research? In my, I did my research, basically, um, in the Philadelphia Library. Oh, good. Yeah, the print and picture <laughs> department and in the, you know, mm -hmm. in the stacks of the library, just spending weeks there on end researching that material. Well, that's very nice. Now, in 1995, Harcourt Brace published uh, Alice Shirtle's Down the Road, ALA honor book, that uh, is enhanced by your art. Now, here we're showing pictures of bedeviled Hetty, who should have gone straight home with her basket of fresh eggs, but instead picked apples. Uh, how do you feel about this book? Uh, I'm often asked, what is my favorite book? And I, my answer is all of them. But if I really had to pick a, a favorite, Down the Road would probably really? be oh, my favorite. Um, it's just a wonderful story, not only um, about a child's um, getting that first responsibility, but parenting as well, on how the parents actually react to the spilt milk, mm -hmm. so to speak, you know, the, the dropping of the eggs. Um, and this was being, this actually this was my first, that first year I did five books, so that was one of the five. Um, and it was the book that was up for the Caldecott honor. Uh, right, the Caldecott honor. honor. Um, and um, so it's, it's a wonderful book, and I, um, I hope that it will stay in print forever. Mm -hmm. um, being a notable, I hope that will, you know, give that, you know, give that stamp. That helps. You know, it helps. Right. Today you don't know. Yeah, in, in 1995, Dial released uh, Doreen Rappaport's The New King. Now, we're looking at some portraits of the wise woman and the young Madagascar king who mourn her father's, his father's death. Where did you find 19th century Madagascar clothing that you used on the characters? Well, <laughs> the queen, interesting enough, um, is now my fiance oh, and, oh, um, lovely. <laughs> she also was the one who was very instrumental in getting um, that kind of um, material. I had this clothes made. I did a lot of research oh, um, at the University of Penn mm -hmm. um, in their archival department. Um, so I, uh, the, the work that, the clothing, uh, to answer your question, um, was basically made. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. You know, I made that. You made it. Yeah, I actually had made. I just had it designed and, and made from the research, doing the research. My books are highly researched. Um, in the book, Fire in the, not Fire in the Mountain, in the book, Only a Pigeon, mm -hmm. um, I actually went to Ethiopia um, to do that. I'm going to take up from there then. Uh, in uh, 1998, Simon & Schuster published mm -hmm. The Bat Boy and His Violin by Gavin Curtis with yes. your art, which you dedicated to the Negro Leagues. Yes. That book is about uh, a young bat boy who uh, plays classical violin music to boost members of the team his father manages. Right. What Coretta Scott King Award did that book win in 1999? The Credit Scott Honor, which I am, it's an honor, it's an honor for me to receive that award. Um, five years um, ago, I didn't even know what the Credit Scott King Award was um, because my um, interests lie in the fine arts. So, um, so if one had asked you, know, you five years from now, you will win the Credit Scott King, I would have said, what is that? Um, but it's an incredible honor. It and, certainly uh, is. In 1999, Dial published Clifton Talbert's Little Cliff and the Porch People mm -hmm. with your art. Here we see lovable little Cliff who passionately smells the aroma of his great-grandmother's sweet potato pie. Yes. What lent authenticity to your art for that book? 
One, I traveled to um, the Mississippi Delta with Clifford Talbert um, to go in to get the nuance of that um, really incredible community um, still today. And because it is basically about his um, growing up as a little boy, Clifford, the, uh, the author. But um, remembering my days going back and remember I grew up in Philadelphia, but I spent summers in uh, Maryland with my aunt, uh, my great aunt and uncle, and having sweet potato pie cooked on those wood-burning stoves, man, I really, I remember that. So. I guess so. You conveyed it. In 1998, Little Brown gave us I Love My Hair by Natasha Anastasia Tarpley with your lively art, including appropriate end papers. Do you have any comment about that book or any of your other books? Well, I Love My Hair is a wonderful book. Um, and it was a book that um, Little Brown, being the publishing house, contacted me and said, we have a story from you for you that is not, it's unlike your other books. It's whimsical. Can you do whimsical? Mm -hmm. And I thought about it, and I said, well, why not take a try at it? You know, it's all about the challenge. And I did. And my first image was the image of a little girl with a corn rose going mm -hmm. back in space, and it turns into the field of corn. Um, and it's a delightful book. I, like I said, a lot of my books are really about um, emotion. And the type of stories that I get are very strong human interest stories. I did five, I did, that first year I did five books, and in five years I've completed t 22 books. That's splendid. So um, I've turned down a number of books, but the stories are just incredible stories that challenge me, you know, and I want to illustrate. So I, I'm accepting great stories. I'm booked to the year now, 2003, and um, have, have I'll be you, doing this for a long time. Uh, have you ever included uh, uh, books about Caucasian characters? Yes. Um, well, in the beginning, my books were largely Afro-American, African descent. Um, and I really, truly wanted to do multicultural. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't want to get pigeonholed. So I asked, could I have an all-white book? And Dial came to the forefront there. And he gave me a book, a wonderful book, entitled Dirt on Their Skirts. And it's about the uh -oh. female baseball league of the 1940s, mm. which will uh, premiere in next year. I was wondering because I hadn't heard about that. Yeah, that's the new one and yeah. I'm excited. And actually, I have two new books here that I brought with me today that oh. um, I uh, will come out this year. One what is are called, they? one is entitled, uh, if I may, one yeah. is entitled The Magic Tree and the oh, other yeah. is My Rows and Piles of Coins. Oh, yes. Um, now, There's the magic My tree. Rows and Piles of Coins is an author that I worked with um, previously, it's, his name is Tolo Moel, and he did, I did Big Boy with him. Yes, you did. Oh, Big yes. Boy, I love that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Will you write and illustrate your own book? I'm in the process of doing that now. And um, do you teach art anywhere? Oh, most certainly. Talking about passion, you had mentioned passion earlier, and uh, passion, I, I have two passions, one of which is the art, of course, and the other is teaching. Oh, good. I've been teaching for about 20 years now. Great. And I now teach at the University of the Arts. Um, I work with sophomores and seniors there, um, teaching senior portfolio. And sophomores, I teach pictorial foundations, which I'm teaching as foundations of drawing and painting. And I love it. The, your students are very lucky. We've seen samples of your illustrations, but equally important is your impressive fine art which is exhibited in prestigious galleries. We're going to show three samples of local watercolor scenes mm -hmm. and ask you to comment mm -hmm. on them. The first one shows the Philadelphia Museum of Art in the background. What's, in the, what's the site of the foreground? The foreground is Boathouse Row. Uh, when I decided to paint, actually when I graduated from school, I didn't get, I was not prepared really for the job market. So when I graduated, I had a difficult time trying to find a job as an illustrator. So what I did was taught. And eight years, I didn't pick up a paintbrush for eight oh. full years. 
And I decided, wait a minute, I, I liken myself as a boxer who trained all these years and never got an opportunity to get into the ring. So I wanted to find out if I really had what it takes. So I started to paint in my classroom. And as a young artist, I decided, that what was it I'm going to paint? What is it that I like to paint? What do I enjoy? Well, I enjoyed fishing, and I enjoy water. So I just positioned myself right down in Schuylkill River, and there I began. Um, I painted Boathouse Throne, which I look, I spent many hours sitting there on, that, on the banks of the Schuylkill mm -hmm. and on the Delaware painting. The second local scene is of a street scene w complete with traffic lights. Where were you positioned then? Third and South Street. Oh. Um, I was positioned there, actually I was, to get that shot, I was right in the middle of Third of South Street to take the photograph. Um, but I painted all the major corners down on South Street. I think um, a doctor, I mean a, a doctor, I, I think um, an artist um, is one who documents time and space. Mm -hmm. And that's what I, what I spend my time doing. I kind of document um, my environment as I see it, you know, as I experience it. And um, South Street is you know, an area that I enjoy going to. And yes, it's and exciting. It's ever-changing as well. Exciting. Your third scene is of the Benjamin Franklin Bridge that connects New Jersey and Pennsylvania. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, why is it uh, sometimes helpful to paint on a foggy day? Well, it's not so much helpful is that a lot of my work in the beginning was highly detailed. And I was looking for an element that um, would be useful to kind of diffuse, if you will, the detail. Um, and fog became that element, um, s very much like what, um, how Whistler uses night in his nocturnes. Um, so that's why I, I actually I painted a number of images that are um, using the fog that are from on foggy days. So I go out early in the morning to catch the fog. I hear you. Yeah. They mute the yes. pictures. Very uh, poetic, I think. Uh huh. What's, in your opinion, what's the difference between illustration and fine art? Oh, you've opened up a can of worms there. Um, it's a, it's a debate that we constantly have, um, even in school when I'm teaching. I, although I teach illustration, um, <laughs> other than the fact I always joke, I say the difference between the fine artist and the illustrated: one makes money and the other one doesn't. But besides that, um, I think the difference is that one is, both of them are strong in their own right, very mm -hmm. much like classical and jazz. You know, they're just different. Um, but I feel that because of the issue of having to satisfy someone else's problem, you don't really get into the emotional side of the illustration. The illustration, I, but at, on, the, on, the same, on the same vein, when you look at the illustration, it's not looking at individual images as one does in fine art. It's looking at the con complete book, the complete package, right. mm -hmm. and therefore it becomes an emotional body of work as opposed to one particular mm -hmm. image as in a piece of fine art. When I sit down as a painter, I'm thinking about how am I going to solve this philosophical problem that I set up for myself. Right. Um, but as I'm sitting down as an illustrator, I'm thinking about how can I best convey this piece of text. Mm -hmm. Uh, I understand you have a web page. Yeah. What do you uh, promote? Myself. <laughs> yeah. You might um, get a little publicity. <laughs> I, um, my web page has, actually one of my students developed my web page. He came to me um, and said, I would love to do a website for you. And I said, oh, that sounds wonderful. And um, we put together a page that is, uh, well, a whole group of pages, I should say, that really talks to, <coughs> excuse me, talks to the issue of my books and my fine art, um, as well as I decided to show um, my school visits. That now that I'm a children's book illustrator, I go around and um, promote passion well, how and striving often is for it, excellence. Uh, is it on? Is it on all the time? Is it? Oh yeah, you can so go, you, you can, can go, it's, 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 it's very simple to go to. It's www.eblewis.com. <laughs> That's easy enough to remember, I should say. Yeah. Do you get any uh, 
comments of, from people about the web from the web page? Actually, I do. Um, my agent went to it the other day, and he was really delighted to see. You know, it's a very well done uh, page, and I have a clicker on there, um, a counter that lets me know how many people have gone to the site. And oh. as I think, as of yesterday, it was like fourteen thousand people have gone to the site. So it's it's getting it's it works. it's doing what it works right. Mm -hmm. It's doing what it's what it's meant to do. Are any of your uh, children artistic? One, Aaron, the the eldest, is mm -hmm. artistic, um, and he actually shows promise. Actually, he's much better than I was at his age, you know, I think, as I, if I can remember back. Mm -hmm. um, he is very he's very intuitive. Um, he was a very precocious child, um, and now, um, now that he's going to pursue science, actually, he wants to be an anthropologist, really. I think it has something to do with the dinosaurs. My youngest son is not as talented, but he loves to paint. He loves to draw. He loves to dilly-dally and, and, you know, really get his hands in the paint. So I p encourage it all. Mm -hmm. uh, what was the book that you dedicated to Dorothy Briley? who was an editor at Clarion and one of my dear friends. Uh, incredible, incredible uh, person. I dedicated the book. Here it is. My, my Rose, Rose and Piles of Coins uh -huh. um, by Tolo uh, Morrell. And it's, Dorothy was one of the, fir the first who gave me um, the opportunity. First editor that... Uh, gave me the opportunity mm -hmm. um, to, to do books. And um, we developed a friendship throughout. It was not, I, you know, I had known her many years, but uh, the years that I did know her, she was an influence in my life. And this, she's going to be surely missed. Oh, she was a wonderful person. She was. Yeah. I'm sorry. Our time is up. We have to stop? Yes. Oh. <laughs> I, it has been a joy oh, it has to been present my pleasure. <laughs> Evie Lewis, watercolorist with passion. A neighbor once told your father that you were marked for good. You fulfilled that prophecy as a splendid artistrator. Thank you very much Thank for being here. Thank you very much. Here. Thanks for having me. La 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 la